Welcome back to Fox 5's On the Hill live this Sunday morning. As of January 1st, Republican Congressman Bob Good of Virginia is now the chair of the House Freedom Caucus. It's a group of about 40 conservative members that are critical to getting bills passed in the House. We got word overnight that congressional leaders say they now have a stopgap measure which will give con Congress until early March to finalize spending bill. Will this latest deal get through the House? Let's welcome back in Republican Congressman Bob Good. He is the new chair of the House Freedom Caucus. Congressman Good, uh, good to see you again. So uh, you've heard this news that apparently we are going to get the details of this later tonight. Are you on board with this or do you still have questions and concerns? Well, I'm concerned just because uh, the recent continuing resolutions have essentially extended the Biden, Pelosi, Schumer policies already in place under which the American people are suffering and have simply extended the spending levels that are bankrupting the country, resulting in a $200 billion monthly deficit. They've done nothing to help the American people or to reverse the harm that's being done. So I'm concerned this may do the very same thing. I guess we'll learn a little bit more later this evening. So to be concrete about what it is you and your caucus want to see, you don't want to see a freeze in spending, you want to see a cut in spending? Yeah, we, we, what we tried to do a year ago was to return defense spend, or excuse me, non-defense discretionary spending to pre-COVID levels, meaning before it was ramped up massively uh, to record levels uh, in the name of COVID, we ought to be able to can return spending back to pre-COVID level for non-defense discretionary. That's what we were fighting for a year ago. I think that's pretty reasonable in the minds of most Americans. But at, at the very least, we ought to be able to go to the levels that were signed into law last summer with the uh, FRA, the Failed Responsibility Act, as I called it, because it didn't cut spending enough, but it was the debt ceiling increase. Uh, that, that would at least reduce spending modestly year over year. But we ought to also, uh, I would just add, secure the border as a condition of continuing to fund this government. Why would we give more money, billions of dollars for that matter, to a Department of Homeland Security that is facilitating the border invasion that is literally destroying the country? These are some things that you've been saying for quite a while now, especially in regards to spending. The new House Speaker, Mike Johnson, apparently has been working with Democratic Senate leaders to craft these agreements. Do you feel like you're being heard by the new Speaker? Well, I think we're being heard. Uh, you know, we have much more access to a Speaker who's listening uh, and taking input from members. And I think as a conservative in his heart, uh, and wants to do the right thing. However, I think he's listening to some of the wrong people as well. And unfortunately, the end product so far has not been good when it comes to spending. We have $34 trillion in national debt, nearly a trillion dollars a year in interest payments now. We're on track to be at $36 trillion by the time we get to the next election. That is not something for Republicans to, to run on, that we actually increased spending and we didn't secure the border. We saw the remarkable moment last year when the House Speaker Kevin McCarthy was removed from the chair over concerns about stopgap spending budget deals. The new Speaker has apparently now done the same thing. Is Mike Johnson in trouble as the Speaker of the House? Well, I don't think we ought to apply, uh, I should say, the, 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 the same standard, if you will, immediately to someone who's been a Speaker for two and a half months versus someone who was the leader of the Republican Party for years, for a, over a decade for that matter, and put us in the position that necessitated a new Speaker. Uh, Mike Johnson inherited a very difficult situation. Last year, we should have passed our spending levels at the amount that the former Speaker agreed to in order to become Speaker, and at the amount that all re our Republicans voted for, the Limit Save Grow level, which went back to that pre-COVID level spending, as I mentioned, and had our own policy changes, the things that we ran on that were implemented. If we would have sent those over to the Senate before September 30, before the expiration of the previous uh, fiscal year, the uh, funding deadline, then we wouldn't have a new speaker. We'd have been in a strong negotiating position, and uh, Speaker Johnson would not be in this position. He inherited a tough uh, situation. However, he doesn't need to join hands with Chuck Schumer and do what the Democrats want to do and do what the White House wants to do to avoid any consequence of a government shutdown, which is just a temporary pause in non-essential government operations. Congressman, I want to get into a little bit about what you just talked about a moment ago on the border, because this appears to be you know, a critical thing thing that, that folks on the Republican side want and what exactly is it that you want done on the border? We know you're not happy with the White House. We know you're especially not happy with the Secretary of Homeland Security Mayorkas right now. In fact, House Republicans are trying to impeach him. What needs to be done? 
Well, it needs to be noted, you, we, the Democrats want to conflate border security with immigration policy. We are the most generous nation in the world when it comes to immigration. We allow about a million legal immigrants into our country on an annual basis. That is a wonderful thing that we do. It's a merit-based uh, system where we require patriotic assimilation, people who earn their citizenship. However, what we want done, quite simply, is stop the illegal invasion at the border. This administration is literally suing Texas, fighting Texas, trying to stop Texas from standing in the gap and preventing illegal immigration, illegal invasion, I should say, illegal entry. It's not immigration when it's illegal, mm -hmm. but illegal entry into their country. We need to reinstate the policies that were working under the Trump administration. That's codified in H.R. 2, the border security bill we passed out of the House last year. It does things like reinstate remain in Mexico, where you have to wait in Mexico to have your fraudulent asylum claim heard. We don't release you into the interior of our country when 90-something percent of those are fraudulent claims. We end catch and release, where we apprehend you at the border, but when you right. surrender, they're, they're surrendering the border patrol, and then we release you into the country. We need to finish the wall. Uh, we need to just implement the policies that were working when Trump was president. Congressman Bob Good from Virginia joining us live on the Hill this Sunday morning. Congressman, we thank you. And that's going to do it for this thank Sunday's you. On the Hill.